everyone in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I did this portrait of an accent in pastels now the first thing that I like to do is get my background drawn in and once I'm happy with that I'm going to start with the eyes now for the background of this piece I just added a simple glow effect so I've got a lighter center and then the edges and the corners are darker I've got a few tutorials on my Patreon channel that show how I create this effect either using soft pastel sticks or pan pastels and it really does help to create a really nice softness to the portrait without adding any complex background or even if you didn't just want to leave the paper colour showing through something like this can add a lot of depth to the piece. Now once I've worked with mapping in the eye I'm going to start to now work with the fur around the eye. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using just my pastel pencils for all of this portrait. I didn't want to use my pan pastels here just because the face is a little bit smaller. I wanted to be able to hint at exactly where those lights and darks are and given the size of the portrait the pencils are easier to do that. Now what this also shows is that you don't need all of the pastel supplies in order to create photorealistic drawings. You don't need all of the pan pastels, you don't even need every pencil of every brand. But what I'm doing here is I'm using a combination of my pencils to build up my values gradually and really focus in on my contrast. Now contrast and values is something that I talk about in every single tutorial, both here on YouTube and in my in-depth tutorials on Patreon. The contrast is what's going to give that portrait a three-dimensional look. So if your dark values are dull and your highlights are not as bright as they should be, the portrait looks really flat. So by focusing on dark shadows and bright highlights, just as I'm starting to capture here, you're already starting to get more of that three-dimensional look. Now if you do feel that you're getting a little bit more of that flatter appearance, then it's very easily fixed with pastels. As long as the teeth of the paper hasn't been filled, we can go back and forth adding layers, reinforcing those lights and darks as we do so, and always just looking to build up more of that realism in the piece. Now another key aspect that I cover in all tutorials is the importance of pencil technique. Now even when I'm working on a smaller scale like for this, I do want to be making sure that I am really focusing on the fur direction, the length of my pencil strokes and the thickness of my pencil strokes. Now the fur direction as you can see on the top of the head where I'm starting to build up the shine between the eyes, that there is is very tiny detail so I have to be making sure that I'm moving the pencil and using it in a right way that's going to enable those real fine lines to be achieved. Now something else that's just as important as pencil technique is making sure that your shadows and highlights are in the right place. So again on the top of the eyes above the orange markings you can see that I've curved that highlight but that it's in the right place. It's central to the skull, it curves over both the tops of the eye sockets and where they've got that slight frowned expression. If I don't get the position of those highlights correct, then I'm going to change the structure of the face. Just like the fur direction, the position of the highlights and shadows is not random. It follows the underlying bone and muscular structure. So if both of those aspects, the fur direction and the highlights and shadows are not right, it's going to change what that animal looks like. So it's something that I always pay very close attention to. And even as I'm starting to block in my base layer here, Look at how I'm hinting at my main lights and darks. Now the other reason why I like to map this in at my base layer stage, this would be exactly the same if I was using pan pastels, is I'd like to be able to see in my reference photo exactly how that animal is starting to come to life and the values is such a big part of that. The position of those highlights and shadows is what determines the shape of that face. So I want to be making sure that I've got that from the very beginning just because it's easier to then follow that reference photo as we continue to work through that portrait. Now one aspect of this dog here is that the orange parts, the ginger parts around the muzzle were very very bright so I wanted to be making sure that I had good colour saturation here. Now although I've got good colour saturation and I've got that orange layer in there I am also toning it down. So I don't want to be always focusing with those really vibrant colours because that won't look right for that dog. I don't want to make them luminous, I want to be able to tone those down where needed. And you can see here I'm coming in with a darker burnt sienna pencil to achieve that. This is always again about reinforcing the values. So I'm darkening the sides, I'm darkening that orange colour so that I can build up more of that three dimensional shape of the muzzle and the nose. Where the dachshund has a little bit more of a longer nose that there is going to create a different placement of the highlights and shadows compared to something on a Labrador. So this is 
always one of those situations where we do have to study that one reference photo at that time. Even from Dachshund to Dachshund, the dog here would look very different to another Dachshund the same breed, but depending on the face structure, those highlights and shadows will look different. So it's so important to really study that photo. Now, of course, another aspect that does affect the lighting is whether or not you've got a strong one-sided light source. Now, this dog, the lighting was more overall, more face on. It didn't really have a one-sided light source as such. So the lights and darks are a little bit more equal. But if you do have a one-sided light source, it's very important to make sure that you've captured that. So you want to be brave with your darker values and brave with your highlights because that's going to bring more realism and depth to the finished piece. Now the body portion of this dog in the reference photo was quite soft and almost out of focus. There was details on the face that I could see but there really wasn't any details on the body to work with. So when I've got portraits like that where I'm working from photographs that are soft, maybe a little bit more lower quality, I need to be making sure that I am still hinting at depth but that I don't force too many details. Now when we're working from a softer, blurrier image, it's very easy to make the details look wiry. Because we want to add more detail than what we can see in our reference photo, the pencil strokes can sometimes look forced or a little bit too harsh. So because this Dachshund does have more of the softness of the fur, but it is still very short, it's nothing like a German Shepherd for example, I had to still make sure that I was using the right pencil technique to get the length of the pencil strokes accurate, but that I didn't make the fur look wiry. And as I've said, this is something that can happen when we're working from photographs that don't quite have that detail and definition. But despite that, the one thing that I'm focusing on here, and you can see it perfectly, is my contrast. And you can see here that for most of the body, I am using my darkest black pastel that I have. I'm then building up my midtones and highlights on top. But in order to get this looking realistic, I have to be brave with that very first layer, making sure that it is really dark. Now, of course, this is going to vary depending on the lighting, the reference photo. You might not need to put as much of a darker layer down as I have here. I've got lots of tutorials on YouTube that show how to draw black fur. But for something like this, where it is in shadow, it's very important to make sure that it looks like that in the portrait. So the head that is cast in that shadow on the lower part of the chest, if I add too many highlights there, it's just not going to look right. Now the paws of this portrait are available as a little focus tutorial here on YouTube and the real time version on Patreon. I'll link both of those videos in the description below if it's of interest. But there I really do show how to break it up to make it look realistic. Toes, fingers, whatever it may be, they have that tendency to sometimes take on the wrong shape because we're either trying to map in too many toes at one time or the highlights and shadows become a little bit blurred. That there can really change the shape of the feet. So if you would like to see this tutorial here on YouTube, then as I've said, I will link that all in the description below. Now, the very last element to work on for this portrait was the cushion or the blanket that the dog is sat on. So because this was more of the squared checkered pattern, I did want to break this up into the shapes that I see. Now, I would recommend this wherever possible because this means that I can focus on one tiny section at a time. And before I know it, the whole cushion or pillow, whatever it may be, starts to then take on more of a realistic look rather than if I was to block it all in in one go. Now by blocking it in in one go we lose where our lights and our darks are. I don't really like to put in one solid colour and then build up from there because it can be very easy to get confused. So by breaking it up here into my main lights and darks and just the shapes that I see it starts to look more like that reference photo quicker. Now I find that I'm then far more motivated to keep on with that portrait if it's already looking like that reference photo early on. So I'm starting to also build up the fabric texture here with some of my Carbofello pencils and here is a couple of my Pipped Pastel pencils. Both of those brands work really well together. And then finishing it off with some of my Caran d'Ache highlights. Now the Caran d'Ache pencils, they are a thicker lead so they can be a bit harder to get those finer details. But as long as you're using very minimal pressure on those pencils and using the right technique with those, you can achieve very fine details with them. It is a little harder just because of the thickness of the lead, but it's one of those things, it's just a bit of trial and error and practice. Now the last thing that I want to mention here is when you're working on a portrait where an animal is resting on something like a cushion 
or even if you're drawing the full body and the animal is stood on grass but you might not want to add the grass in it's always worth putting some kind of shadow or something underneath to make it look like the animal is part of that portrait so rather than it just having no shadow no grass nothing around the paws it would then potentially look like that animal's just been plonked on top of that paper like a sticker just by having a very subtle shadow that's just enough to make it look part and merged onto that paper now as you can see here the shadow that i'm starting to reinforce underneath the chest of the dog and slightly more towards the back end of the dog on the red section of the pillow that there is just helping to make it look like the animal is actually resting on top of it which is perfect now of course the light source again is going to really determine that if you've got a strong one-sided light source you're going to have more of a darker shadow on one side of the cushion or pillow compared to the other now you'll also notice that on grass as well and i've got a couple of tutorials here on youtube that show grass elements in my pastel portraits i'll also link one of those in the description below if that's of interest but you'll also see on the blades of grass that there is going to be sections of that grass that are in shadow it might be one of the pores, the side of the body, whatever it may be, but it's really important to capture that to make it look like that animal is then on that surface rather than potentially, as I said, like a sticker that's just been cut out and stuck on top of that paper. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference to my channel. If you are interested in following along to any of my real time tutorials, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I also upload two videos every week to YouTube, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. I'm going to be uploading another video at the end of the week, but as always, thank you so much for watching.